Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'm going to show you one by one all the structures visualized in the subcostal view. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. So let's start. The subcostal view has always been kind of neglected, but the truth is we can get loads of information from this view. This is the first image we get when we start to assess the subcostal view. And if you already notice, this is like a horizontal apical four chamber view. So today, I'm going to show you one by one all the structures you can visualize in the subcostal view. Starting from the top, all that gray granular area corresponds to the liver. This view is fundamental to assess the pericardium because you can see it from all angles. Under that bright line that corresponds to the pericardium, we can find the right ventricular free wall. The first black echo-free space at the top is the right ventricle. More to the left, that rounded echo-free space corresponds to the right atrium. And between the right ventricle and the right atrium, we can see the tricuspid valve. Between the two ventricles, we have the interventricular septum. Next to the septum, that triangular echo-free space, it's the left ventricle. And more posteriorly, we can assess the right ventricular lateral wall. In this view, we can also visualize the left atrium. And between the left ventricle and the left atrium, we can find the mitral valve. This is also a very good view to assess the interatrial septum. If you tilt the probe, you can also open the aorta. Once again, you can notice that this looks like a horizontal apical 5 chamber view. By doing this, now you can visualize the left ventricular outflow tract. Also, you will be able to assess the aortic valve, the aortic root or sinus of Valsalva, and sometimes part of the proximal ascending aorta. If you tilt the probe a bit more, you can also obtain this image from the subcostal view. This is basically a right ventricular outflow view, where at the top we can see the right ventricular outflow tract, followed by the pulmonary valve, and under the pulmonary valve we can see the main pulmonary artery and sometimes we can also visualize the pulmonary artery branches. By rotating the probe, we can also obtain short axis views from the subcostal view. This is a short axis view at the apical level you can also get a short axis view at the papillary muscle level. And even the short axis view at the mitral valve level. All this from the subcostal view. Oftenly patients with COPD have horrible parasternal views. 
And the subcostal view gives you a very great opportunity to assess all the short axis views, even at the great vessels level. This is a short axis view at the great vessels level obtained from the subcostal view. Here we can find the right ventricular outflow tract. We have the pulmonary valve. Under the pulmonary valve we have the main pulmonary artery. And often we can see also the pulmonary artery branches, the right and the left one. The tricuspid valve is also easily visualized in this view. Together with the aortic valve in the middle of the screen. Under the tricuspid valve we have the right atrium. Under the aortic valve we have the left atrium. And between both atriums, you can assess in this view the interatrial septum. Also from the subcostal view, and one of the most important structures obtained here is the inferior vena cava. This black horizontal line is the inferior vena cava. And normally we assess here the inferior vena cava size and inspiratory collapse. Next to the inferior vena cava, we can also find the hepatic veins. This is also a very important structure in order to assess the right heart. That black vertical line emerging from the inferior vena cava are the hepatic veins. One last structure you can often see in the subcostal view is the abdominal aorta. This is the abdominal aorta and it looks very similar to the inferior vena cava. That's why it's very important to get confident in differentiate both. Now I'm going to show you on a video once again one by one, all the structures visualized in the subcostal view. At the top, all that gray granular area corresponds to the liver. Now, remember that in this view, we can get a very good look of the pericardium from all angles. Under that layer of pericardium at the top, we have the right ventricular free wall. And the right ventricle is the triangular echo free space we have here. Now, more to the left, this rounded echo free space corresponds to the right atrium. And between the right atrium and the right ventricle, the first valve at the top is the tricuspid valve. Dividing both ventricles, this wall in the middle is the interventricular septum. Next to the septum, we have a bigger chamber. This echo free space is the left ventricle. More posteriorly, we can also visualize the left ventricular lateral wall. Sometimes it's also very possible to see the apex. And to the left, that rounded chamber is the left atrium. Between the left atrium and the left ventricle, you can see here the mitral valve. And this is a very good view to assess the interatrial septum, which is this wall here between both atriums. Now, if you tilt a little bit the probe and open the aorta, 
you are now going to be able to see the left ventricular outflow tract. Now you also have the aortic valve in this view and also the aortic root or sinus of Valsalva and sometimes part of the proximal ascending aorta. By tilting the probe a bit more, you are going to get this view, which shows the right ventricular outflow tract, the pulmonary valve, and under the pulmonary valve, the main pulmonary artery. Sometimes you will be able to see the branches also. You can also get short axis views from the subcostal window. This is an example of a short axis view at the apical level. We have here the left ventricle with all the apical segments and the right ventricle with the free wall. Now we have the short axis view at the papillary muscle level. We can also visualize the left ventricle with all the mid segments and the right ventricle with the right ventricular free wall. The short axis view at the mitral valve level is also possible to obtain. The left ventricle with all the segments, the mitral valve, the right ventricle and the right ventricular wall are all seen in here. The short axis view at the great vessel level is also a great opportunity when the parasternal views are poor. The right ventricular outflow tract and the pulmonary valve are clearly visualized here. Under the pulmonary valve, we can see the main pulmonary artery and emerging from the main pulmonary artery you can visualize the right and the left pulmonary artery branches. On the left hand side the second valve visualized in this cut is the tricuspid valve and in the middle of the screen we find a short axis view of the aortic valve. Now, under the tricuspid valve, we have the right atrium. And the left atrium is the chamber under the aortic valve. In this view, you can also assess the interatrial septum. This is the inferior vena cava one of the most important structures to be assessed in this view. Very close to the inferior vena cava, we can visualize the hepatic veins and to finalize, you can also get a quick view of the abdominal aorta from the subcostal window. Thank you for watching, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel. See you on another day, bye!